Nobody expects the Fed to cut rates tomorrow, but a new dot plot could offer investors some clues. Welcome to Market Insight, I'm Elena Casas. Fed policymakers meet in Washington today, with the market pricing in no chance of a rate cut either this week or in July, and only around a 50% chance of that long-awaited cut coming in September. The Fed will, though, release fresh economic projections and the so-called dot plot, amid recent data showing that the economy and the labour market are still holding up, despite high borrowing costs. Joining me now to talk about all that is Odetta Kushi, Deputy Chief Economist at First American. Odetta, welcome. What do you think then we'll, that we'll hear from the dot plot? Perhaps only one cut this year and perhaps even some FOMC members not wanting to cut at all? It's very possible. The market is waiting to see if dot plot projections are telegraphing one or two rate cuts this year, which would be down from the previous projections of two to three rate cuts this year. And that's really because inflation in the first quarter of the year has been much more stubborn than the FOMC or anyone really anticipated. So the Fed's holding out hope that we'll see continued progress on the inflation front in the second quarter of this year, uh, and that will uh, allow them to cut rates later this year. We get, of course, CPI data tomorrow morning before the outcome of the Fed meeting. Are you expecting to see a cooling there? We should continue to see deceleration in that CPI. And one of the reasons that we feel a little confident or cautiously optimistic about that is because shelter makes up such a large portion of the overall CPI. It's about 30% of overall CPI and 40% of the core CPI. And we know that shelter is measured with about a 12 month lag in that CPI. And from market data, from market rent data, we know that shelter inflation should continue to decelerate and bring overall inflation lower. So we're cautiously optimistic that that CPI data will show continued cooling. What do you think is keeping inflation so persistent, though, despite borrowing costs being so much higher for longer already? Well, you have sort of that stubborn, uh, super core services component of the CPI, which is services x shelter and food and energy. And that's, you know, really a function of the labor market. The services sector is so labor and intensive. Wages have been quite strong in the services sector. There's been quite a bit of demand. And so that's keeping some upward pressure on overall inflation as well. Potential home buyers are, of course, desperate for a rate cut as borrowing costs impact their ability to buy. Do you think higher rates for longer are going to further slow the U.S. housing market? Unfortunately, I think that's the case. You know, higher for longer rates not only impact the demand side of the housing equation, making it less affordable for potential home buyers, but it also keeps supply locked because a lot of existing homeowners are rate locked into super low mortgage rates. And so they're financially disincentivized from selling their properties, bringing more supply to the market. We have seen supply increase a little bit in today's housing market, but historically it's still very, very low. So higher for longer mortgage rates uh, certainly stifles the housing market. Fed officials, of course, have made it difficult for the market to plan since they're so reluctant to publicly commit to a timetable for cutting rates. Why do you think that is? Well, they remain data driven. It is it's a it's a very difficult uh, balance that they're trying to strike right now. Of course, they want to see continued progress on the inflation front towards their two percent target, but perhaps by the time they have enough evidence, we'll see weakening in the labor market. And so they're really trying to uh, understand what's happening with their with the labor market at the same time as the CPI before they make any decisions. And so they're looking at the overall economic picture, not just a singular factor. Where do you think the risks are higher? Could, for example, that slowing in the housing market feed into other sectors of the economy? And could we see growth slow too much before they cut? That's exactly what they're fearing, is they're fearing that we'll start to see labor market uh, really slow down quickly uh, as they're trying to reach their inflation goals. So far, the labor market has been very strong in the face of higher mortgage, uh, higher rates, but that might not always be the case. We're seeing job openings decline. So for how long can we see job openings continue to decline without seeing an increase in the unemployment rate? And that's really uh, what the Fed is monitoring. Odetta Kushi of First American, thank you so much for that analysis. Well, that's your Market Insight. You can watch more videos on Reuters.com.